There are three great options in Blender for sculpting, and in this video I'll be comparing Dyne Topo, Remeshing, and the Multi-Resolution Modifier, and I'll talk about why and when you would want to use each. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist. So I'm in Blender 3.0.1, and I've got my screencast keys down the bottom corner here, and this is the general startup file. I'll use the default cube as my example, and we'll head across to sculpting mode. I'll drag my brushes across so you can see what I'm using. Now at the moment, I can't really sculpt this much because it's only got these eight vertices that I can play with. So if I select my grab brush here, I'll resize it with F, and you can see that I'm only moving these vertices, which is very limiting. So I'll undo that. So what I need to do is add some vertices and faces to this model so I can start affecting those faces with the brushes I'm using. Well, the first and most easy option for someone who's new to this is the Dyne Topo option up here. If I tick that, we do get a warning message. It's to do with the UV data on this object, but it's not important. Under the Dyne Topo, the easiest option I would say is the constant detail rather than the relative detail. So I change across to that and put the resolution up to something like 15. And the higher the number, the more faces it's going to create. So let's go to the draw brush now, resize my brush and start drawing on this object. So instantly we've got faces being created on this object by the Dyne Topo tool, which stands for dynamic topology. Now, if I go up to my overlays up here and turn on statistics, we can't actually see the vertices and triangles created yet because you can't in Dyne Topo mode. But if I go into edit mode now, you can see what's being created and you can see my vertices, edges and face count here. And you can see it's triangulated my mesh and added more detail where I've used my brush and kind of linked it in to the other faces. Now let's go back to sculpt mode and incidentally changing modes will turn Dyne Topo off. So I'll have to turn that back on again. The really useful thing about this is that I can keep creating topology on top of itself and creating an interesting looking mesh. A good tool as an example of this is the snake hook tool. If I resize my brush and get this corner here, I can create some funny sort of tentacle coming out like this. So it's a really great tool for sort of free form, easy sculpting, and I can create all sorts of weird and wonderful things. The limitation of this tool, however, if I go up to the settings and turn the resolution up to something like 200, and let's bring out a new mesh here, you can see it's becoming very laggy. I'll speed this bit of footage up, otherwise it'll take a little while. Oh, and it went wrong at the end because it was so laggy, it didn't really work. So if I go into edit mode again now with tab, you can see we've got about a million faces there and you can see the detail of the mesh. So obviously don't try this at home. I've got a very powerful computer here that's coping well with this, but even this computer can't handle Dyne Topo with the constant detail set to 200. So there's limitations to this type of sculpting. Yes, it's really great and we can create beautiful, interesting meshes, but when it comes to the detail, such as creases in objects, dents, dinks, damage, wrinkles in skin, it's just not the right tool. If I go back to the Dyne Topo once again and change the resolution to something more sensible, like 100, that seems to be kind of its limit. It's not too laggy, it's working pretty fluidly. And again, it's helped by the fact that it's a pretty powerful machine. If I come onto this face here, there's a lot of detail on this mesh, but it just about manages it okay. So it's just when I go up to the high level of detail that it starts having problems. The other limitation you might get is when the face count of the mesh gets particularly high into the millions, depending on the power of your computer, of course, it will start to struggle even with this constant detail on because the whole of the mesh is so dense. So what are our other options? Well, next to the Dyne Topper, we've got the remesh option. So I've got my default cube back, and once again, I've only got these eight vertices to play with, so I need to add some faces so we can use the remesh. In the remesh, we have what's called voxel size. Now, the easy way to see that is if I press Shift R, and this only works in sculpt mode, of course, I can change the voxel size, and you can see the size of faces it's going to create. So the default is 0.1, so we'll start off with that, and I'll press Control R to remesh. That's the same as pressing this remesh button here. And that did a fine job, and I can start drawing on this now, and that's great. Let's bring back the statistics and we can see it's quite a low number of faces. And if I go into edit mode, you can see it's evenly distributed those faces, just like that grid that we saw when I pressed Shift R to resize those voxels. So that's what it's trying to do is create evenly distributed quads across your model. Let's go back into sculpt mode and let's turn this up a bit more. So let's try 0.01-ish and Control R. And we've got a much finer mesh and we're up to 77,000, but we can still see some of that detail Let's go across to the remesh now and let's go a bit silly and 
0.001 and remesh. This will take a few seconds. Don't try this at home unless you've got a very powerful machine, which does seem like a good time to talk about this video's sponsor, NVIDIA and PC Specialist. As you probably know, Blender's performance is greatly accelerated by NVIDIA RTX GPUs, with their ray tracing cores and AI tensor cores, boosting viewport performance, denoising, rendering, and much more. PC Specialist are NVIDIA Studio Partners, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform great with Blender. I'm a big fan of PC Specialist and have had a great experience with their PCs. They are leading system builders, specializing in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. PC Specialists sell a range of customizable PCs that are NVIDIA Studio certified, meaning the spec has been tested to meet a creator's requirements. Configure your next system using PC Specialists online configurator and they will build, test and deliver your RTX Studio certified rig to your door. I'm using a PC Specialist PC and if you're interested you can see my PC specs on the screen here. The star of the show being the NVIDIA RTX 390 and the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. I'm extremely happy with it, it's powerful, quiet, and I know it's been built properly with the creator in mind. So a big thanks to PC Specialist and NVIDIA for their support of this channel. So we're up to 24 and a half million faces now. Let's start drawing on that. And you can see it's drawing fairly smooth still. No lag. And I'm just doing this with a mouse. And let's go in and see how fine that detail is. Very, very fine indeed. If I press Alt Middle Mouse button, that will center me on this spot so I can zoom right in close and you can see this fine detail that I can get here. So that's really great, no lag at 24 and a half million faces. And this is really useful if you want to use alpha brushes. So custom brushes of things like rock textures, stitches and wrinkles. Having this amount of faces means you can add that type of fine detail and use those brushes, which makes it a lot easier. And you can find out more about custom brushes in my sculpting playlist, link in the description and card in the corner. I'm going to remesh this back to 0.01 and show you the limitations. So you can see immediately that detail level is lost. And a major difference of this compared to the Dyn Topo, if I grab the snake hook tool and make my brush nice and big, come across this corner and do that fun thing that I was talking about before. As I come further and further out, you can see the mesh itself is being stretched. So let's go into edit mode and see what's going on. The topology is all distorted and overlapping itself and not very good at all. So let's go back to sculpt mode. So the remesh method isn't as free as the Dyn Topo. What you can do is I can press Control R and remesh at this point, maybe smooth that out a bit. And the remesh, if I go into edit mode now, has added that voxel size over the shape, which is quite a fine voxel size. So we can still add a fair bit of detail into the bigger shape. If I go back into sculpt mode, but it does stretch things out as it goes. So I'll have to keep pressing Control R, maybe smoothing areas out and then go a little bit further if I want, Control R. And you have to keep doing that process of remeshing whilst trying to change the shape. Otherwise you will get stretching in your object, as you can see there. So remesh is great for really, really high poly sculpts. So sculpts with lots of faces where you want to add fine detail, but it's not as free as Dyn Topo, where it creates the topology for you as you're stretching and pulling it about. Okay, so let's take a look at the multi-resolution modifier. Well, back to my default cube here. And of course, being a modifier, we go across to the modifier tab here, add modifier and multi-resolution. It's much like a subdivision surface modifier, but it's specific to sculpting. So if I come across to here and press subdivide, you can see it does exactly what the subdivision surface modifier does. I'll undo that though, because I want to subdivide simple, which will keep its shape. And I can keep pressing the simple button here and it will keep going up and you can see the face count over here and it's taking a single face and dividing it by four each time. And I can keep going again with this powerful machine. I can go pretty far. I'm up to a million now. Let's go one more to six million. Let's just quickly see what that resolution looks like. at six million, nice and fine. And I can add a fair bit of detail to this. And my brush is fairly smooth. There's no lag. So that's a fine amount to work on. Let's go one more. Take a few seconds once again, because we're really going high again. So we're at 25 million faces, just above what we had for the remesh modifier. And let's try sculpting on this. And you can see the lag that I'm facing when I try to sculpt. So it's very jumpy. It's not a pleasant experience to sculpt at that level. And you can probably go to about 10 million, 15 million faces without experiencing too much lag, depending on your machine once again. 
So you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just use the remesh? Well, there's a few really handy things about the multi-resolution modifier. So here's a tank top for a Wolverine character I've been working on, and you can see that here. I'll be releasing a breakdown of how I made that character in the next week or so, so do keep your eye out for that on this wonderful channel. Now clothing is a good example of where the multi-resolution modifier really shines. I can come across, add modifier multi-resolution, subdivide this. Now notice when I subdivide it, it does lose its solidify modifier, but as soon as I go back into object mode, so go into object mode, I'll bring the viewport levels up so you can see the sculpt. We've got the solidify modifier and we've got the sculpt on top of it. So I can stack the multi-res with the solidify, which is very handy. So back to sculpt mode and I can come in and obviously add some detail and subdivide and add some more detail, which is really great because I've got that low poly mesh there. I've got the solidify modifier on it. So if at any point I want to go back to object mode and think, oh, it needs to be a bit thicker, I can just up the thickness with the solidify modifier and that's really great. So it's certainly more versatile. Another interesting thing, if I close this multi-res down and let's go to sculpt mode once again and let's try remeshing. I'll change it to 0 0.01 so it's a bit finer and remesh. Now it's gone all crazy. That's because I've got a solidify modifier on and it doesn't like that, so I'll undo that and I'll close that down. Let's try again at 0 0.01. And once again, it's not happy. That's because this is a non-manifold mesh. So it's got these holes in where the arms are and the head is and torso. So the remesh can't make a new mesh out of it. So if you do ever end up with a mesh like this, that may be because you've got some holes in your mesh or you've got some doubles or some of the normals are reversed. So those are things to look out for. But it shows also a limitation of the remesh modifier. I'll undo that. What we need to do if I bring back the solidify modifier is apply the solidify and then we can come across to sculpt mode and remesh. But we haven't got any of that control that we do with the multi-resolution modifier. So those are the three different tools. Now combining these tools can be very effective. So I'm with my default cube once again, which only has the eight vertices. Let's turn on Dyn Topo, ignore the warning and change the detailing to constant detail and let's up it to about 15 once again. I'll go across to the snake hook tool, make some funny objects, something like this. Now I can turn the Dyn Topo off, go across to my remesh, Let's up the voxel size a bit and remesh. Now I've got the shape defined. I can come in and start adding the detail that I want, maybe with the draw brush or something like that. Maybe some eyes. And what a great creature we got there. So you can outline your shape with the freedom of Dyn Topo and then go across the remesh and remesh it. So combining the Dyn Topo with the remesh can give you the freedom of Dyn Topo with the power that you get when you remesh the shape. Another option that people use, if I go back into object mode, add the default cube is to build up a base shape first by overlapping lots of shapes like this and you can obviously have more complex shapes like cylinders add subdivision surface modifiers to your shape and all sorts once you've got all those shapes overlapping you can select them all Control j to join them all together into sculpt mode and then we can once again remesh the great thing about this is if i go into edit mode you can see that it's actually linked them together and i'll go inside the mesh now and taken out those inside pieces. So we've got a manifold shape here, which is great for sculpting. So that's another way of having that performance with the remesh modifier, but you build your shape up first and then start remeshing once all those shapes are joined together. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out with the different sculpting modes and which one to choose and why. Thanks once again to my sponsor, PC Specialist and NVIDIA. Thanks to you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.